Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. The system failed them. Tonight we're hearing from the family of a murdered woman whose suspected killer is believed to have been set free after a previous attempt on her life. New tonight, they are heartbroken and they are furious. Slea Frazier was murdered this week during a violent rampage in Harper Woods. Her boyfriend, Jonathan Welch, is the accused in the case and at the time, he was out on a $10,000 bond for trying to kill Frazier just days before. Sean Lay has been digging deeper into a very sad, horrendous bond controversy. He's live at 36 District Court tonight where a magistrate set that bond, Sean. Magistrate did set that bond here a number of days ago, Devin, here at 36 District Court. We continue to ask the magistrate about her decision-making, what went into that bond. She has yet to respond to any of our questions. Chief Judge here also has not responded to our questions. So we go to the victim's family. Of course, they're heartbroken. They're outraged. They have questions about this bond. How do you commit a crime like sexual assault and, and torture and, and they let you out with $10,000? Quazon Frazier asking the key question of 36 District Court Magistrate Don White on behalf of his murdered sister, 22-year-old Zalea Frazier. Why did White give Frazier's boyfriend, 23-year-old Jonathan Welsh, a $10,000 bond and a tether after a horrific domestic violence attack against Frazier June 2nd? The charges torture, home invasion first degree, harmful device causing injury, criminal sexual conduct, assault to commit, sexual penetration, assault to do great bodily harm, three counts of felonious assault. Welsh posted that $10,000 bond last Friday. He is now charged with murdering Frazier last Sunday while murdering his stepfather and critically stabbing his own mother while setting her house on fire and shooting at police. At Welsh's arraignment on the murder charges, Harper Woods police called the bond given to Welsh an opportunity to kill. Uh, he was given a chance with bond at that time and took his freedom as an opportunity to finish a job and kill victim Frazier. You know, 10,000 is easy to come up with. It's people that, 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 that steal something from a store that would get more than 10,000. You tortured somebody, you sexual assaulted somebody, and you got out with paying $10,000. So again, the magistrate who set the bond has yet to respond. The chief judge has yet to respond. Who has responded to us so far is Prosecutor Kim Worthy. She tells us tonight, quote, it is an understatement to say that it is exceedingly difficult to get appropriate bonds for violent felonies from some of the 36 district court magistrates. Magistrates have reports available to them that detail alleged crimes in their files before a bond decision has to be made. The bond that was given to Mr. Welch for his alleged horrific crime was much higher than we usually get. So we were hopeful that after the presentation of the evidence at the preliminary examination, that would hopefully persuade a judge to actually increase the bond accordingly. It never got to that level tragically, never got to that preliminary examination. Now Welsh is being held, uh, a judge in Harper Woods holding him on no bond tonight. We're live outside 36th District Court, Sean Lake, Local 4. How many questions still to be answered on this? All right, Sean. Right now, a gunman is on the run on Detroit's west side after a deadly shooting at a children's birthday party. It happened just hours ago at a park near Fullerton and in Indiana. Police tell us two men got into an argument that escalated to gunfire. One man was shot and killed. The shooter ran off. A lot of bright green there on Storm Tracker 4 as we head into the overnight hours. Yeah, that means a uh, steady rain showers on our way. Paul, nothing too severe though, right? Nope, no severe. In fact, no lightning at all. And we need this rain and the fact that it's falling at night. That's the best news of all. We're going to try and salvage a good deal of this weekend. We'll talk about that in a bit. But right now, here you are with just scattered light showers in the area. And back to the west, you can see there's a more substantial batch of showers, mainly south of 8 Mile. This is 8 Mile right here, Baseline Road here. And this is all moving eastward. So there's nothing really going on here with this. You can see there's actually not a whole lot going on behind it either. But uh, if we zoom in a little closer, you can see there's no lightning. I have lightning tracker turned on. So this is just a good solid downpour. And again, if we can maintain this thing into the area, 
area, that would be much needed rain that a lot of us will be happy to get. All right, right now temperatures are in the 60s and they're not going to drop a whole lot farther tonight because dew points are also in the 60s. So a weekend snapshot, we're looking at 83 degrees and a mostly dry day tomorrow. And Sunday, we're now trending a little more favorable with the showers and thunderstorms. We'll talk about all of that coming up, but don't forget the local forecasters app is your friend. It has real time radar. You can pan and zoom the map with your fingers. See anywhere you want the rain anywhere in the country, even in Europe. You can look at the radar. It's fast, easy, accurate, and it is free. Just go to the app store, search under WDIV. Be back with another update in just a few minutes, guys. Paul, Detroit police honored fallen officer Lauren Courts this afternoon with a prayer vigil at the second precinct where he worked. Officer Courts surviving family members were among the crowd made up of police, people from the community, and many of whom had never met Officer Courts, but were there because they wanted to show their support. Chief James White and others reflected on how special he was and how they've been grieving his loss. Because Officer Courts is what the Detroit Police Department is made of. This is the type of officer uh, that we all hope to be. Uh, if I could be half the chief that he is police officer, or was his police officer, I will make an imprint on this city and this department that will make all of us proud. I'm going to choose love over grief right now. I just have to love the fact that the court family allowed him to come to us. Love the fact that his wife and kids lost time with a father and a husband and allowed him to come to us. Love the fact that he was a jokester. Love the fact that this second precinct just adored him. I mean, wrapped their arms around him. Um, I'm going to choose love. I'm going to continue feeling this way, and I'm going to... Uh, everyone deals with grief at their own way, their own time. And here now are the funeral arrangements for officer courts. Everything is going to take place at Greater Grace Temple in Detroit. Public visitation tomorrow, starting, uh, starting at noon. It'll run till 8 p.m. tomorrow evening. Sunday, it will be 3 p.m. until 9 p.m., and then the funeral the next day, Monday, July 18th and it will get underway at 1130 in the morning. Governor Whitmer, by the way, has ordered flags across the state to be lowered to half staff on Monday in honor of officer courts. Quick help for suicidal thoughts and other mental health emergencies will soon be easy as 988. Tomorrow, the new three digit crisis hotline will launch across the U.S. routing callers to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Our Megan Woods is live tonight with more on how it will work. Megan. Kimberly, Devin, this National Suicide Prevention Lifeline has been around since 2005. It's a 10 digit number and it's not easy to remember, especially if you're in a crisis and that's why they're changing it. Starting tomorrow, all people have to do is dial 988. You have like a news story where a young child died, dialed 911 and they were the, the deciding factor if their mom lived or not. Getting mental health support will now be just as easy. Keisha Jackson, who started a suicide prevention nonprofit, Caleb's Kids, says the new number will change lives. You have reached the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It's something that we can teach kids when they're young. Keisha lost her younger brother, Caleb, to suicide in 2015 and can't help thinking what 988 would have done for him. If he had someone to talk to where he felt comfortable leaning in and comfortable getting the help that he needed, then maybe he would still be here today. The crisis line will have more than 200 call centers available 24-7. Macomb County Community Mental Health is one of them. Our crisis center will, will be taking calls from all over the country. Plus, they'll be taking calls from our, our local. All these lines have been merged into one. So it's probably going to be tough. Nobody should ever have to experience a long wait anywhere. Crystal um, Boise, the director of Community and Behavioral Health Services, says the need is there. The seriousness of the cases have increased and also the volume has increased. The hope is with 988, the lives saved will also increase. We have this number that will help change how we think about mental health, help change how we think about support, really could be life changing and, and have a generational impact. And last year, that National Suicide Prevention Lifeline received 3.6 million texts and calls. That number is expected to nearly double once they change it over to 988 tomorrow. That local crisis call center that we spoke to, they say they're going to look at the data in the next couple of months and see if they're going to have to hire more counselors to answer those calls. Live in Detroit, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. That's great. Okay, Megan, thanks. 
Tonight, medical examiners determine Ivana Trump, the ex-wife of former President Donald Trump, died accidentally from blunt impact injuries to her torso. Police had been looking into whether she fell down the stairs. Ivana was Donald Trump's first wife and the mother to Donald Jr., Ivanka, and Eric Trump. She was 73 years old. New at 11, more monkeypox vaccines are headed to the U.S. as the number of reported cases rises 40% in one day. 100,000 vaccine doses are being sent to the U.S. in the next few days. Several million more will follow in the months ahead. U.S. health officials say the vaccine supply hasn't kept up with demand in New York, California, and other places. There are currently 11,000 monkeypox cases worldwide, and cases are expected to keep rising for a few more weeks.